Welcome to this episode of MoGuard TV. I am your host, Airman First Class Haley Burgess with the 131st Bomb Wing. In this episode, we'll be guiding you through the steps that a recruit takes to become an airman in the Missouri Air National Guard. We'll begin with a brief overview of our organization and the professional and educational opportunities available to citizen airmen. We'll then explain the administrative process and our student flight program that prepares a recruit for success at basic military training. Next, we'll move on to an overview of basic military training and Air Force Technical Training School. And finally, we provide an overview of on-the-job training after technical school and the service commitments of being a citizen airman in the Missouri Air National Guard. Our first segment is a brief overview of the Missouri Air National Guard and the professional and educational opportunities available to citizen airmen. The Missouri Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and is composed of two organizations, the 131st Bomb Wing and the 139th Airlift Wing. Each wing has its own mission. The 131st flies the B-2 Spirit Bomber and is headquartered at Whiteman Air Force Base near Knob Noster, Missouri, and has several units stationed at Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis. The 139th flies the C-130H Hercules and is based at Rosecrans Air National Guard Base near St. Joseph, Missouri. Each state's Air National Guard has a dual federal and state mission. Our federal mission here at Whiteman is going to be to support the active duty Air Force and the B-2 mission on their deployments where they may go. So as maintainers on the B-2, we'll travel right alongside the active duty airmen to help do that mission. On the state side of things, if there is flooding, natural disasters, we can be tasked to help provide relief. Each wing is manned by airmen who perform a variety of jobs that support their mission, including flying and maintaining the aircraft, managing air operations and the airfield, as well as providing medical support. There's over a hundred different career opportunities for individuals, whether it be enlisted or the officer ranks in the Air National Guard. They will run from a plumber, to aircraft technicians, to finance, to security forces, to firefighters. Essentially, you can pick up our base, set us out in the middle of nowhere, and we're self-sustained. We're a little city. We have to have people to work there. The Air National Guard has the same rank structure as the U.S. Air Force, with airmen divided into enlisted members and officers. In the Air National Guard, you will find two different career paths, the enlisted side and the officer side. The enlisted side is going to be basically the doers, the ones that are turning the wrenches, making things happen. They're going to ensure that things are getting done. Officers are kind of like the manager or the coach of a ball team, and then the players are actually like the enlisted members who are executing what the coach has given them as direction. To be an officer with the Air Guard, you have to have a four-year degree. So most generally, our folks come in enlisted, have us pay for their four-year degree, then they apply for an officer position. The Missouri Air National Guard sets a high standard for their applicants and is looking for a certain type of individual to join their ranks. When we're thinking about the ultimate recruit, what we're looking for is someone who's driven, who's passionate, and who's wanting to serve. They can be looking for education and the benefits that we have, but the underlying factor is they're willing to serve and understand the obligation that comes along with being in the military. We expect you to show up on time, get into your job, doing it to the best of your ability, and striving for excellence. For the Air National Guard specifically, we want somebody who does want to serve their country. That's a very important component because we do have the state and federal mission and you could be activated at any time. In order to join the Air National Guard, you have to be at least a senior and 17 with your parents' permission. And we go up to age 40. Now if you have some prior service experience, say four years active duty, we could subtract that off the age 40 requirement. So in that case, as long as you can put in 20 good years of military service prior to your 60th birthday. U.S. citizenship is not a requirement to join the military. 
certain cases we can put people in certain jobs that are not U.S. citizens as long as they have their INS card and they're working on their citizenship. The Missouri Air National Guard offers outstanding benefits to its members. What I see as a recruiter, a lot of individuals are joining the Air National Guard today to help further their education, whether it's to pay for their education to go to college or whether it's to get training that we have to utilize in the civilian workforce. They want that education. I wanted to serve my country, but I definitely wanted my education paid for. Missouri Air National Guard has educational benefits of 100% tuition assistance currently. They will pay off of Mizzou's rate to a Missouri accredited college up to 39 credit hours a year and that starts after the day you enlist. We also have the Reserve GI Bill. It's available to you for 36 months. If you're a full-time student, you can use up to $368 a month. Along with the Reserve GI Bill, some career fields qualify for an additional $350 kicker. So you're looking at potentially getting around $700, $800 a month just for going to school full-time, depending on what benefits you can utilize. Another benefit offered to airmen in the Missouri Air National Guard is voluntary premium-based health and dental plans. They can purchase medical insurance for themselves on an individual plan, or they can purchase another plan for them and their families. And we offer that to our members at a very, very reasonable cost. The Missouri National Guard is a family-based organization that recognizes the role that a citizen airman's family has in the success of the mission. We actually have a family support group and they provide opportunities to bring our families into our organization, which is outstanding. The Missouri Air National Guard does a really good job putting families first. Missouri Air National Guard recruiters are professionals that vet and help guide an applicant through the enlistment process. I absolutely love being in the Air National Guard and it changed my life so much. So it's an opportunity for me to be able to do that for someone else or to be able to help them do that for themselves. As a recruiter, we take personal responsibility for each and every one of our applicants. We are there for them every step of the way. Any questions that they have, we're always going to be here for them. We're the ones who the, these people are trusting for the next six years of their life. My role is not to convince them to make a decision to join the Air Guard. My role as a recruiter is to provide the information needed for he or she to make the decision based on that information, whether or not the Air Guard is right for them. I try to get people to understand it's not just the job, but it's the opportunities, the education, the medical, potential retirement. Those are things that you really can depend on. In this next segment, we'll take you through the administrative processing of a new recruit and learn about the Guards Student Flight Program. When an individual is considering joining the Missouri Air National Guard, they first want to meet with a recruiter. Missouri Air National Guard recruiters are found at three locations, Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis County, St. Joseph, Missouri, and Whiteman Air Force Base in Knob Noster, Missouri. The applicant will call a recruiting office and set up a time to meet with a recruiter to ask questions and find out if the Air National Guard is a good fit for them. At that point, the recruiter will schedule a day for them to go to MEPS. MEPS stands for Military Entrance Processing Station. New recruits for all branches of the military go to MEPS for in-processing. It's a long day. There's certain days that they do this testing. You have to be there 6 o'clock in the morning and you just plan to be there all day. They will feed you, they'll take care of you, but it is a long day. It's kind of like a sports physical, so you're going to have your eyes checked, your ears checked, your mobility. They're going to make sure that you're qualified to join the Air National Guard. In addition to the physical exam, the recruit also takes the ASVAB test. The ASVAB stands for the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. You'll be graded in four different areas, mechanical, admin, general, and electrical. And based on those scores, we can place you into certain jobs. The highest that you can get on the ASVAB is 99, so what I'm looking for is somebody that can score about a 70 or above. 50 is about average. Once you're done at MEPS, you're going to come back here with us and sit down with a recruiter and go over the jobs that we have vacant and what you qualify for. You'll then select the job that you would like to go into and then you'll actually enlist with your recruiter at your specific wing. You'll be assigned an AFSC or Air Force Specialty Code based on the job that you select. 
I like to explain also that you don't necessarily have to find a job that is in line with what you're doing on the civilian side. A lot of times people want to come in on a drill weekend and do something completely different. So let's say they are a finance manager. They may want to come in and say, hey, let me climb around on top of the V2 and, and do some repairs and, and get my hands dirty. Something completely different. It'll kind of give you a variety in your life that'll kind of change it up and it'll be exciting. To help in the decision-making process, the recruiters will take new recruits around the base to observe the jobs that they are considering. We'll actually bring them here to the base and we'll have a member from that actual unit that does that job on a daily basis come and speak with them. So then they can really get a good feel. Is that something I would enjoy doing? Getting to meet the unit members reassures you that it's what you want. It's easier to pick your job when you can talk to them and gain some insight from their experiences. So that really helps, kind of gives them a good idea of what the career field is all about and then they can decide from themselves, hey, this is indeed a career field that I want to pursue or get into. After a military career field has been selected, the recruit will schedule a day to be sworn in. This is the point at which a citizen officially becomes a member of the Missouri Air National Guard. That starts their military commitment. The minimum enlistment is six years with the Air National Guard. So for the next six years of their life, they're going to start coming and seeing us one week in a month, two weeks a year, all throughout the next six years. What's different about the Air Guard is they don't get that pressure while they're at MEPS to swear in right then and there. They have time to decide. The day that you raise your, your hand and swear in is the day that you'll be eligible for those educational benefits as far as the state tuition assistance go. When you're taking that oath of enlistment, you are committing to do something greater than yourself. You have committed to not only support your fellow airmen and your fellow military members, but you're also supporting your state and your country as well. And that's something that is so much bigger than yourself. Before a newly sworn in airman leaves for basic military training, they will spend their monthly drill weekends doing student flight. This is a preparatory course for basic military training that is unique to the Air National Guard. The active duty Air Force and the reserves do not offer student flight. Student flight takes place at Rosecrans Air National Guard Base in St. Joseph for new members of the 139th Airlift Wing and at Whiteman Air Force Base in Knob Noster for new members of the 131st Bomb Wing. It's going to give you the opportunity to meet other folks in the unit who just enlisted. You're going to learn about the Air Force, the culture, the core values, rank structure. You're going to be taking your physical training test. We're going to teach you some drill movements, some marching, how to enter a room, how to speak with an officer, different things like that. We're also going to make sure that you're in process correctly and that you're ready to leave for basic training. So that way when you get to basic training, you have an idea of what's going on and you won't necessarily be blindsided with, with all the new stuff. You're already prepared. So it gives you the tools that you need for when you do go to basic training. Typically, you're looking at two to four, maybe five months before you leave for basic training that you'd be in student flight. One of the other things they do is we'll have one of the younger members who just got back from basic training in tech school. They'll come to the student flight and talk to them about their experience. And that way, the student flighters can ask them questions about what basic training is like and they have the most current information. When we return, we'll be heading to basic military training and technical school where warrior skills and specialty training take place. It's in your blood, your instincts, your gut. It's in that voice in your head that says, I can be something better, something stronger. We've been waiting for you and your resolve to protect this great land you love. Are you up to it? It's up to you. The Air National Guard. The rites of passage that all airmen must complete are graduation from basic military training and technical school. Basic military training is eight and a half weeks long in San Antonio, Texas at Lackland Air Force Base. You go to the exact same basic training that all the other Air Force individuals go to, whether it be the Guard, the Reserve, or active duty. You will not know the difference when you're at basic training. You all train together. The purpose of basic training is to 
get you out of a civilian mindset and into a military mindset. The role of transforming a recruit's mindset is the responsibility of the military training instructor, also known as a TI. The TI has one of the most important jobs in the Air Force, making an airman. The military training instructors are typically going to yell at you or towards you or near you. It's just going to happen. Their job is to transform you from that civilian to an airman that can work under pressure. So it's really trying to find out how you react when you're under a stressful situation. So it might be a simple thing as yelling at you while you're making your bed. Can you handle it? Can you handle that pressure? Can you still complete the task and at the level that they need you to with that pressure? They're going to yell, they're going to holler, they're going to make you feel like you don't have enough time to complete certain tasks. And they want to see that, that you can indeed complete the task and that you can do it without breaking down, that you can do it under the stress. Because no matter how fast or how well you move, it's not going to be fast enough, it's not going to be good enough. Their job is to provide that stress, so everyone feels it, everyone goes through it. You are told when to get up, when to sleep, when to eat, when to breathe. There's a lot of structure, so if you're not used to that, it's something that you'll get used to really fast. You can expect to be homesick, like nobody's business. You don't have any communication with your family. That's really hard. Throughout basic military training, a recruit will be challenged both mentally and physically. For most, it will be one of the toughest ordeals that they have faced in their lives. The most rewarding part of basic training is finding out who you really are and what you can accomplish. It is impressive to see the young men and women going across the parade field looking sharp and knowing as a recruiter what they might have been just a couple months ago. To see that transformation from the outside, it's tremendous. Filled with pride and a sense of accomplishment, the next stage for the new airmen is to attend technical school. The training can be as short as six weeks for tech school, as long as six, seven, eight, nine months of training. It just all depends on the career field. Tech school is gonna be more like a college atmosphere. In basic training, you're sharing a room with 60 other people. In tech school though, you'll have a roommate. It's much more relaxed, and it's a way to kind of decompress from basic training your tech school is going to ha have what's called a phase program. Now, you were restricted in basic training. You couldn't come and go as you please. When you go to tech school, you're going to earn those freedoms back. Say the first week or two, you'll be restricted to staying in your military clothes after your technical training. A couple weeks after that, you may be able to leave base. Your curfew will gradually get later and later. You're going to march to classroom every day. When you get to class, that's when we're going to start teaching you your AFSC or Air Force Specialty Code the job that you're going to do on your one week in the month back here. When you go to tech school, you're going to study every night. Each night's important because you have to refresh on what you learned that day. You're studying and you're studying and you're studying. In the evening, you're going to need to dedicate some time to review the work that you went over. You will have tests, you will have homework, and you will have to graduate. When an individual recruit is attending tech school, they can count on getting the most up-to-date training and the skill set and the facilities are top notch. It's conducive to learning. Every job we have in the Air National Guard has a civilian equivalent. Whether it's air traffic control, whether it's cook, or whether it's a police officer, your Air National Guard training will translate to a civilian career. There is also an educational benefit to graduating from technical school. By enlisting in the Air National Guard, an airman is automatically enrolled in the Community College of the Air Force, or CCAF, which is an accredited two-year college run by the United States Air Force. The CCAF awards college credits for graduating basic military training and technical school. It applies these credits towards one of its 68 associate degree programs. When you graduate tech school, now is the first time you fill that you are truly a member of the Air National Guard, because now you can come back to do the job that you've been trained to do. In this final segment, we provide an overview of on-the-job training after technical school, as well as service commitments required of citizen airmen. In the Air National Guard following graduation from tech school, an airman will return to their assigned unit. Certain career fields may require additional on-the-job training, also known as seasoning days. 
An example if you're working on a C-130 airplane. In tech school, we'll teach you how to work on all the airplanes in the Air Force inventory. When you come back here, we're gonna really focus on the C-130 because that's what we fly. We wanna make sure that we're comfortable with you working on the C-130, just like we want you to be comfortable working on the C-130. The training is done Monday through Friday, much like a full-time job, with the duration depending on the career field. Getting back from tech school, it can be kind of scary because you're just in a new world and you're just kind of hurled into it. But luckily we got great supervisors out here that are very knowledgeable because they're doing it every day and they're more than willing to help you. They work with you and sometimes you work with them. I mean, the success out here is a good team effort. After all the initial training is completed, the airmen will return to their civilian lives and begin reporting for their regularly scheduled drill weekends. Part of being in the Air National Guard and the commitment that you have made is that you're going to come to drill or unit training assemblies two days out of a month and then you're going to have annual training days of typically up to two weeks a year that you're going to come to. Really what this does is it keeps you fresh on that skill that you learned at tech school so that if we need to call you up to do something that you know how to do it and you're ready to go. So what you're doing is you're doing your job, you're, you're training with a trainer, or you're training somebody to do that job. You're sometimes doing professional development, and so they're always getting that edge. If you need any medical requirements updated, if you need any specific training completed, it really depends on what career field you're in, what you're going to be doing on that drill weekend. A drill weekend is also an opportunity to build team camaraderie and have fun. One of the great things that you have when you come on drill weekends is you're getting to reconnect with those folks that maybe you haven't gotten to see for three to four weeks. It's your Air National Guard family, so it might be something that, you know, one of your best friends, but you only get to see them that one weekend a month, so it's really nice. During the day on drill weekends, Air Guardsmen are expected to carry out the orders that have been handed down to them, but once released, they are free to do as they please. At that point, a lot of times the members get together, whether it's here on base at the base club, social hour, things like that. If you're outside of the local area, you'll have a hotel that you'll be staying in. The next day, you'll come in Sunday morning, go through, you'll finish up some of your training. You'll perform your job that you were enlisted to do. And then Sunday afternoon, it's all done, and then you come back next month for your next drill. But always keeping in mind the integrity, that you still are a part of the Air National Guard and you have to keep up that integrity and you have to show that you are still military. You can't just let it all go and then come back. Normally a regular scheduled drill is the first weekend of each month unless it coincides with a holiday or something like that. Each year our leadership meets and they set those drill dates so you're able to provide an order to your employer a year in advance on when you're expected to be at work. There are also opportunities to serve beyond the minimum commitments of drill weekends and annual training. There are opportunities to look at full-time positions later on down the road, or even to get on orders, say during summertime in between school breaks, to pick up extra days to get a little extra income performing your job that you do on drill weekends. So there's different opportunities, different doors that open up, whether it's full-time, part-time, or just getting on orders to help out for a few weeks to a month at a time. The Air National Guard is a great way to serve your state and nation and enrich your life. I look forward to helping my community one of these days. It's a great thing to serve your country, but it's even greater when you can serve it right here. The integrity that you feel being a part of the Air National Guard is something that you feel and you will always carry with you. It is now my honor to introduce the commander of the Missouri National Guard, the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Thank you, Airman First Class Burgess, and thank you, viewers, for watching this episode of MoGuard TV. Our mission is to organize, train, and prepare a community-based force of citizen soldiers and airmen to serve our state and nation. In this episode, we have followed the training and commitment that it takes to become an airman in the Missouri Air National Guard. Our ideal recruit is driven, passionate, and has a willingness to serve. It is my honor and privilege to lead some of the finest airmen that this country has to offer. The success of our organization depends upon the caliber of the individuals that we are able to recruit and retain. 
If you are interested in becoming a member of our Guard family, please visit us on the web at moguard.com. On behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our nearly 12,000 Missouri Guardsmen, thank you for your support.